Welcome into the sanctuary of the City of Refuge Christian Church of Northwest Indiana. The Bible says in John 8, 32, that you should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So get your Bible and follow along as Pastor Pernal brings forth the words of life. Before I get started, I want to say, I remember there was a time when Pastor Pernal called me, and there was a lot of y'all on the phone. Uh-oh, everybody got quiet on me, Pastor Pertle. Don't get quiet now. I remember. I, God's going to point you out to me. Just to let y'all know, Pastor Pertle called me one day talking about this cook-off we're supposed to have this Thursday. Yeah, that's me. That's me. Now y'all remember, huh? Uh-huh. There was a whole lot of voices in the background screaming and yelling at me about what y'all was going to do to me. Y'all didn't know I was going to come this early, though, did you? All right. God's going to point you out. But thank y'all for making some noise for Pastor Perto. I love Pastor Perto and Lady Linda. <laughs> that's good. That's, that's, uh, that's awesome to support your pastor in a way like that. Even though he's going to lose, I sure appreciate y'all supporting him. I come to let y'all know I ain't scared. It's not about how many people with you. It's about the spirit that's in me. I'm not scared. All right? Just to let you know. <laughs> but first I want to give an honor to my beautiful wife for traveling with me, Pastor Bray DeWalt over here. I couldn't do that without her, without her being my help meet and, and support. So I thank her for being such a help meet and support and pusher. Because y'all don't know, there was times I did not want to do this. And she was behind me like, uh-uh, brother, not today. <laughs> and we thank you guys for being welcoming to us here. Thank Pastor Perto and Lady Linda for bringing us here in the portage and letting us uh, reside in their homes with them this weekend and, and show the love and fellowship of God. We thank for that. From one of my biggest mentors over here, Pastor Taylor. Him and, him and my wife used to double team me all the time. <laughs> we were in Washington State when I was brought into the city of refuge, and uh, I would see Pastor Taylor every time I went to the commissary. We're not even in Washington State anymore, and I'm afraid to go to the commissary in South Carolina because I might run into Pastor Taylor. But see, I was too busy running, and it, but God knew where I was going to be, and he would always send him there. And I was like, I'll just be. So I said, okay, God, I, I'm done. I'm tired of running. But let me open in prayer before we get started. Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for the time that we've shared with you already and the times that are yet to come. I thank you right now for the, the men and the women that's been ordained, Father God, that they are continuing to go and do your will, Father. We just thank you for that right now. And now as I come as your messenger, God, use me as your mouthpiece, Father God. Let me decrease and you increase in me and have your way in this service today. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Now, I'm, a, I'm an old retired sailor. So that's one of me and Pastor Proto Beef right there because he's a retired Marine. So, y'all, you already know how that go. <laughs> but, you know, we retire at 20 years if we haven't reached a certain point in our career. I was at point 18 and a half. I was at year 18 and a half. And I wasn't at that point where I can go past 20 yet. But at 18 and a half, I was finally promoted to chief petty officer. And they told me the reason you were selected is because you never took the pack off, meaning you never stopped pressing. You continue to move. You continue to show love. You continue to train. You didn't stop moving. And I say that just to say, even when I did put it on, I couldn't stop moving. We have to keep going. But the year prior to that, the years prior to that, when I didn't make it, I was down. And they said, you know, you just need to beef up your resume just a little bit more. And what they were saying is there were still some things that you need to do to get to the level you want to get to. But see, I was comfortable where I was. Because, see, I had been in this particular position for about six or seven years, so I thought I was at the pinnacle. But I didn't understand I was just at the pinnacle of that position. But there were still some things I needed to do to get to the next one. 
So where I was comfortable at in this position wasn't enough to get me to the next. And sometimes we allow ourselves just to get just a tad bit comfortable where we are because we've been there so long that we can't move to the next because we're happy where we are. And to the candidates, I come to tell you today, please don't get comfortable. Don't get comfortable because there's still more to do. Because even when I did, was, when I was promoted, I still had more learning to do. I still had more pressing to do. It's never over. It's always a scene of reigning and a season of training. Training is necessary. But see, we get so much into training, we forget about the learning. Because we got to learn before we can train. We have to learn. And to learn, that means we need to put ourselves in a position where we can. Don't ever get too big because of a title and think you can't learn anything else. I'm still learning today. I'm learning today. And what I found out was it required me to do some things differently than what I was doing before to get to where I wanted to go. I had to do some things different. I had to shift my way of thinking. I had to shift my way of doing things. I had to keep pressing toward the mark. And that's a perfect segue because today's scripture is Philippians 3, 12 and 14. 12 through 14. Amen. Philippians 3, 12 through 14. And the majority of my scriptures, I will be coming out of the NLT. And verse 12 reads, Now that I have, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things which are ahead. See, we can't get ahead if we keep looking backwards. I don't want to see y'all driving on I-94 or I-80 uh, looking backwards. That's not going to get you too far. Not without running into something else. 14, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus. So Paul starts off here saying that he had not attained. That he had not apprehended. He still had to press forward. And what he's saying is, I haven't arrived yet. I haven't arrived yet. And see, it, it, and most of us, including myself, would say that Paul here was very mature in the faith. But yet, he's still saying he hadn't arrived yet. Do I even need to go any further than that? I think y'all know where I'm going. <laughs> then he says, but I press. I press on. He wasn't comfortable because he was an apostle. He had to press on. It's not about the title. It's not about the position. It's not about the church. He's had to continue pressing. Press. But here's where we miss the boat. Because we become satisfied where we are. I told y'all I was a Navy, so y'all heard that right. Missed the boat. <laughs> we become satisfied where we are. Here is Paul. Six books already into the Pauline epistles. And he's still saying, I have to press. We sit in church six months and think we don't have to do nothing. Uh oh, I can't get no help right there. That's all right. <laughs> six months. We know everything. We've arrived. We've made it. Don't want to listen to nobody. Don't want anybody telling us what to do. Here's a man that's six books into his writings, and he's still having to press. And we think that our little six months mean something. Come on. We still need to press. I don't care if you've been in the house of God six months or 60 years. Pressing does not stop. It does not stop. Keep the press on. Keep the press on. <laughs> Understand where we are right now is not meant to be our final destination. And see, some of us think that's where we are right now. I've made it to the pinnacle. And I don't have to press anymore because I can't go any higher. But the devil is a liar. He's a liar. You can go as high as God takes you as long as you allow him to take you there. Y'all remember the old song, I'll take you there. 
<laughs> I'm not going to sing. I'm going to allow Dr. Anderson to do that when he get here. <laughs> he would have sung that for you, and I'm not going to sing that. But understand, keep pressing. So if you're taking notes, the title of the message is Keep Pressing On. Keep pressing on. Now, I have a basketball star sitting in the house today. If I was to say, uh, 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 the coach tell us to run uh, a press, she knows exactly what I'm talking about. See, a press on defense means we're not waiting for the people to come to us. We're going to them. And there's some called a full court press. That means you're going to press the entire way. Sometimes we have to set ourselves up in a full court press and to stop allowing things to come to us and meet them before they get there. Because we see, when we sit back and allow it to get to us, they already got the upper hand. They got momentum. We standing still thinking we're going to stop it, and they just rolling like a big old snowball. And that's why we get ran over. Because we sit back and we wait on things to happen. Because we don't see in our spiritual eyes. We want to walk around fleshly and not in the spirit and not understand that it takes spirit to see from afar off. We had something on the ship that we call uh, uh, over the horizon, which is about 10 to 20 miles away. See, we couldn't see over the horizon. But in the spirit, we can see over the horizon. You need to know what's coming to you before you leave the house. Don't wait till you get there and think you're going to pray and think it's going to be all right. There was a song that said, don't wait till the battle over to shout now. Don't wait till midnight before you pray. Prayer, you, there's some things out there that's trying to get us. That sister was singing in the song today. She's tired of this. She's tired of that. She's tired. Those things take vision. We have to speak those things. Although we don't see them or we might not be involved in them, but that don't mean we can't pray about them. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. And it's easy to mistake movement for forward progress. See, some of us think just because we're moving, we're progressing. But if I was to tell everybody to get up and run in place, everybody would be moving. But nobody would be going anywhere. No one would be going anywhere. See, these gentlemen over here know what it is to exercise in ranks. There was a whole lot of movement, but nobody went anywhere. Now, if you think about Martha and Mary, Martha moved a whole lot because she was about preparation. She was about making sure things were tidied up. The dinner was cooked. The floors was clean and all that good stuff. Yet still, she missed God. She moved and moved and moved. And Jesus was sitting right there in the room. Mary sat at his feet. Mary got closer to God in her stillness more than Martha did in her busyness. And see, we can't allow our busyness to miss God. It's great to continue to do things. But don't allow busyness to make you miss God. But see, we're too busy trying to compare to everybody else and want to look good. And pretending that we're doing something. I'm sorry, Pastor Pertle. But he told me to bring it. It's time out for trying to look good. And thinking just, you know, because they see me doing something, I done made it by. Deception. Well, understand. This man and this woman, they have spiritual eyes. They might not say nothing to you, but they see your foolishness. That's just a warning in case you think you're getting over. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> but I want to give us three ways we hinder our forward progress. And I'm going to allow y'all to go on and grab y'all some Sunday dinner, all right? <laughs> I know he told y'all off from Charleston, South Carolina. Y'all know those southern, pre those southern preachers can go just a little while longer. I'm not one of those. <laughs> Pastor Taylor tell you, he told me, I brought, he brought me to Washington one time. He said, now I want you to do about 20 minutes. And then we got something else to do. I was done in 15. <laughs> I, had, you know, I wanted to make sure you were there. We military. We on time. <laughs> Early is on time. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure he had time enough to do what he needed. And I also know that God was finished speaking. See, I don't just continue babbling on just to be up here. When God is done, I'm done. Because I don't want to be accountable for telling you anything wrong. I want you to be able to go and look up what I said and say, whoo, he wasn't kidding. It's not about me. It's always about him. Amen. Point number one of how we hinder our forward progress is we stop believing because we stop moving. See, I just told y'all about Mary and Martha. Martha sat. 
but our progress moved forward. We think we stop. We stop believing when we stop moving because of that spiritual eyesight. We don't have it. And we think just because I'm not moving, God is no longer in it. And that is not the case. Let's look at Exodus 32 and 1. Exodus 32 and 1 reads, When the people saw how long it was taking Moses to come back down the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and come on. They said, make us some gods who can lead us. <laughs> we don't know what happened to this fellow Moses who brought us from, from the land of Egypt. See, they were still. And Moses had only been gone 40 days. Because, see, if you go back in chapter 24, it'll tell you that he went up to the mountain with the Lord. Here we are in chapter 32, 40 days later, and they tripping. We're so impatient, we got to move. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I like the microwave, but I think that's one of the worst inventions we have. Because we think everything's supposed to be done just as fast as the microwave. If it ain't here yet, I got to make it happen. My goodness. But Moses goes up to the mountain with God. And he's getting further instructions from the people. Moses is what I call, he's in what I call, I like to call, a holding pattern. Anybody ever flown before? I know we got some flyers in the house. Now, pilots fly that plane. Now, we used to live in Japan, all of us pretty much. Would fly from Japan all the way to L.A. or Atlanta where we was landing. And they were controlling. They were flying. We get to where it's time to land. Then the tower says, I need you to hold. So the holding pattern is the plane is flying in circles. Because there's so much traffic, you got to wait your turn to land. Moses is what I like to call, he's in a holding pattern. Because he's up here flying with God. But God is not going to release him till he gives him the okay. But the people don't know that. Because their eyesight, their spiritual sight was not intact. They, 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 they moved by what they saw. They didn't understand the spiritual aspect of that thing yet. So because they didn't see this fellow Moses come back down, they figured the progression was over. Now we stuck right here in the middle of the desert. Isn't it funny that how we forget so quick the things that happen? God had brought them out of Egypt. They had crossed the Red Sea and saw their enemy swept away in the river. But yet and still, they forgot. Because you know what the problem was? They looked at the leader and not God. They're talking about when is Moses coming back down? Didn't realize it was God that had him up there. But see, if we have our own relationship with God, we don't have to depend on Pastor Pearl. Yeah. 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 He's here to help you continue on. He's not here to do it for you. We all have Bibles. We all have our own prayer language. We have relationships with Christ. It would behoove you to take advantage of it. There's a group of people in the Bible called Bereans. By the way, that's my wife's nickname. They didn't just believe anything that was told to them. Whatever was said to them, they went to look it up and read it for themselves. We have to become Bereans in the house of God. Because when we become Bereans, we'll know when there's some false teachings going on. But we don't know that if we're not reading for ourselves. We have to know Christ for ourselves. Because See, they could have just prayed themselves and asked God, what's going on with Moses? Instead of going to his brother and saying, hey, this dude ain't coming. We need to do this. But that's what happens, though. When, we don't, when, we, when we're in a place when, to do, you know, when we don't want to do something, we make up stuff as we go. <laughs> we make it up as we go. And as we making it up, we praying. All right, God, be with me as I go make a fool of myself. We're supposed to be led by Christ, not walk and look back and talk. Okay, God, you with me? Be led by him. Be led by his spirit. <laughs> it's time out of moving in front of Christ. And the children of Israel didn't realize God was providing a blueprint for them to move forward for the rest of their lives. And see, when we get impatient, we nullify what God is trying to do for us. 
We nullify it. God has something for us. But we're so impatient and we want it right now, like that microwave, we go in front of God and try to make it happen ourselves. <laughs> Understand, how we handle delays speaks of our maturity, our spiritual maturity. Because we know to pray if something ain't happening right now. What do you do if he's not answering? You continue doing the last thing he told you to do until he does. But the problem is we over the last thing that we were doing and we're tired of it and we want to do something different. God, I'm tired of that. I've been a digging for 20 years. When is Pastor Purdy going to see my worth? <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> Don't get tired of where you are. That speaks of your spiritual maturity. Understand God may be working some in you while you're in that process of waiting. And if we leave out of that process of waiting, we miss what he's trying to do. And we wonder why 20 years later, 40 years later, like the children of Israel, they're still walking around the same place. Do you know that they could have been done in that trip in 11 days? We know that. We need to look at our own lives like that. Why in the world am I still going around this same tree? How did I end up here again? Why am I walking in a circle? I just don't get it, God. Because we mistake movement for forward progress. I'm moving, but I'm not going anywhere. That requires some change in you. That requires a shift in what you're doing. You got to ask God, God, am I doing what you called me to do? Or am I doing what I want to do? And a lot of times if we're in the same place, it means it's the latter. We're just doing what we want to do. <laughs> but look how this situation could have been so differently if they would have just prayed themselves. But no, no. Another thing we do and what they did, they went back to what they were familiar with. Because, see, when they left out of Egypt, that's what they served. They served like the Canaanites. They had calves and all this type of stuff for worship. So what they knew was, if we're not going any further, at least we know what we came from. And that keeps us stuck. When we're too scared to stay still, too scared to move forward, we go back to what we used to. But, see, I was good at what I used to do. I'm in a place of not knowing right now. But I don't know if you know or not, a place of not knowing if you're walking with God could be a good place. That's right. That's right. Just wait on him. Wait. It will come. Amen. Amen. Number two, I told you I was going to get y'all out of here so y'all can go eat. <laughs> Number two is we do the opposite of what he told us to do. Anybody ever been there? God told you to do something, you go the whole other way. That was a brother in the Bible by the name of Jonah who did the exact same thing. And Jonah 1, 1 through 3, it says, The Lord gave this message to Jonah, the son of Amnitai. Get up and go to the, the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked his people are. But Jonah, this joker, got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa where he found a ship leaving to Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went on board, hoping to escape the Lord sailing to Tarsus. He said, I'm going to escape. I'm breaking free. <laughs> he said we have the right to be free. Not the meaning. <laughs> not the meaning. This is not a jailbreak. But he says, I'm not going that way. I don't want to go there. Now, there's reasons why he didn't want to go there, but that still doesn't mean anything if God has told you to go. Amen. See, to break that part down, Jonah was really holding a grudge on what happened to his people years ago. And he said, I am not going to see these people set free. With all the crap that they did to my people back in the day, I don't want to see them free. I want them to be held in bondage. So you know what? I'm just going to go this way and walk my happy self on out of here. But let me, let, me, let me show something to you right quick. Understand one thing. 
when he went his own way, he bought his own ticket. <laughs> Trying to do things your way will cost you. It will cost you. We never heard God saying anything to him when he told him to go to Nineveh that he had to pay for anything. He said, I just need you to go over there and give my word. But when Jonah decided to go his own way, he had to pay. We wonder why things cost us so much. And I'm not just talking about finances, y'all. We wonder why it's costing us our peace. We wonder why it's costing us our mind. We wonder why it's costing us our salvation. We wonder why it's costing us our relationships. Because we don't want to do what God told us to do. It cost Jonah to go in the opposite direction. Go back and look over your life. Look at the times you went away from what God told you to do. And look at the price you had to pay. And can I share something with you? Do you know he still ended up there anyway? Now, Chicago is what? 95 East? There, 94 East? I'm thinking I'm in South Carolina. Ain't it? 94 East. West. 94 West. But there's nothing to say you can't get there going 94 East. But it's going to take you a lot longer to get there. You can wind up where you're going, going the wrong direction. It's just going to take you a longer time to get there. And don't get mad at God with all the stuff that you're going through because you didn't go the right way from the beginning. If we would just humble ourselves and follow what he says, I tell you, our paths would be much smoother. And we can be there in record-breaking time. But we like walking around that tree for 40 years. I know. I walked that tree. Walked a few of them. <laughs> My God. I tried to run, y'all. I tried to run, I'm telling you. <laughs> we don't want to tell the truth, Sister Linda. Everybody else is like, here I am. <laughs> no, y'all sitting up here fibbing in church. Some of y'all might have been in the club last night, but I'm not going to go down. Don't act like you always been saved. We all had our walk. But when you have leaders, they're trying to help your walk be shorter than theirs was. We've already walked it. We don't want you to walk in our steps. Your, 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 your trip could be shorter. My goodness. Ah. But see, I, I, I liked my weekends. I love getting away with my honey. I wasn't ready to give up my Sundays yet. Pastor Taylor had been hunting me down for about eight years. Am I right, sir? And it was to the point that he would call, and I would, <laughs> where's Bray at? <laughs> because he knows she's going to tell it. <laughs> he ain't doing it yet, Pastor. He ain't doing it yet. I'm like, I thought you had my back. You're supposed to be supporting me. She said, no, brother, I'm on the side of right. That's what you need in your life right there. I'm on the side of right. Because if it wasn't for her, I'd probably be still walking around that same tree, dizzy. <laughs> but see, I thought because we were out on the weekends and I was still going to different churches on Sundays. And look, check this out. Sometimes I would even speak. So I was pastoring. I just wasn't a pastor at their own house. So I thought I was okay. God, I'm doing what you called me to do. <laughs> he looking at me like, boy, if you don't stop. <laughs> you doing what you want to do and trying to add me in. You got a mixture going on here. On That's right. See, but I, he, I, I had to get to a point that I understood that partial obedience was still disobedience. Because although I was doing partially what he told me to do, that was still a whole lot undone. So the part that was undone was making me disobedient. What is it that you left undone trying to move the way you want to move and trying to mix God in it? Like we're a mixologist or a DJ or something. I'm going to do this and I'm going to mix a little bit of God in with it. And we're going to be all right. That's not how that thing goes. Like that commercial said, that's not how any of this works. 
Put God first and let him lead you. Amen. And watch how things go. And I want to tell y'all, and I said this before, but just because you sit in church, just because you have a title, don't mean you won't walk the opposite direction. We can see, if just in case you didn't know, Jonah is a prophet. As a prophet of God, he still walked in the opposite direction trying to do what he wanted to do. We need to get over ourselves. If we get over ourselves, I think we'll move a whole lot further than where we are right now. But we're so stuck on self. My God, SOS. Part of the SOS band. Stuck on self. Y'all didn't know y'all was famous, did you? For all you old school people, y'all know the SOS band. This is just a different one. This is a spiritual remix of it. You were stuck on self, not the sounds of success. Stuck on self. You know, they were selfish too. Just be good to me. <laughs> it was all about them. That's how we are. <laughs> That's how we are. My goodness. Allow God to use you. Be obedient to what he's saying. Don't be a part of the SOS band. We in the SOS band, can't sing, can't play an instrument, nothing. We just there. Listen to what God tells you. Number three, we almost done. Y'all thought I was kidding. Thought I was kidding. All right. Number three of how we handle our forward progress is we be neutral. Neutral. You ever tried to push a car? You put it in neutral, right, and you push the car? Do you understand you can push that car forward or backwards? That's where we are. We're in neutral. It depends on which wave of doctrine come our way is the way that we go. Uh-huh. Uh, y'all didn't know I was setting you up, did you? That's okay. It's, it's all right. See, we walk around in neutral, which means we straddle the fence. Whatever side we fall to is the side we're going to support that day. Uh-huh. See, but we are supposed to stand for what Christ stands for. You can be mad at me all you want to, but there ain't no rainbow flag going up around me. I'm here to tell you now. If it's a rainbow flag, we're talking about God and not doing the flood again. We're not talking about you want to be confused and mixed up on who you are. But we don't want to talk about that type of stuff. But God forbid, he says he hates, he loves the people, but he hates the sin. You still love on the people, but that don't mean you agree with what they're doing. But we have become so neutral, and then we don't understand that being neutral causes us to compromise our faith. See, when we're neutral, we can go either way. <laughs> Whatever way the majority is going, that's the way we go. But understand, when Joshua and Caleb and those other spies went out to come and they came back, once they spied out the land, it was only two that came back with a good report. They didn't care that the other ten came back against what they were saying. It wasn't about the majority. It was about what's right. I know God told us we can take this land. By golly, hot dog, I know we can do it. We can't sit here and bring all these clusters of grapes and figs and all this stuff and talk about how good it is. And yes, it is the land flowing with milk and honey. But we look like grasshoppers in their eyes. How do you see yourself? I, I always wonder how in the world they know they look like grasshoppers in somebody else's eyes. First of all, you were a spy. How in the world did they see you to know that you look like a grasshopper from the start? But we see ourselves how we think other people see us. Because, see, nobody knows our faults like we do. And if you know your faults, you think everybody else knows them too. So we can't walk what God told us to walk in. We got to tiptoe because we know we still ain't right yet. We don't want to walk by faith. We walk by insight. Because <laughs> we know ourselves. I don't know, Pastor Pro. I don't think I'm ready to do that yet. Listen to what the man of God is telling you. He's prayed before you already. 
He's not just going to come to tell you something just so you can stay in church. I know that. Amen. You want to be a healer? Go, go ahead and be a healer. But you're not going to come up in here and spoil everybody else. The little leaven spoils the whole lump. We're not going to do that. Speak the truth. Stop trying to be neutral. Stop trying to please the crowd. We want to fit in. See, we don't want to be by ourselves. We Christians, but we think, you know what? I don't want to. I'm tired of being. I'm so tired of being alone. I'm sorry, Pastor Pearl. <laughs> He's going to tell Doc on me tomorrow as soon as we get to Chicago. <laughs> but understand, we're never bow. He said he would never leave nor forsake us. But yet and still we look at we are outnumbered. But we forget who we have on our side, who we're serving. My God is bigger than anything you have. You may have 450. I got me and God. I'm going to put water on my sacrifice, but I know my God is bigger than them 450 with you. And watch what he does. We have to move in faith. Understand who God is. And walk out what he's called us to walk out. All right? We still on being neutral. We still on being neutral. Let's look at Revelation 3. 15 through 16. He says, I know all the things you do, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other, but since you are like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Are we going to be hot or are we going to be cold? We have to determine. The weather shouldn't determine your inner hot or coldness. Well, it's cold outside. I guess I'm going to be cold today. I'm on fire in the summertime, but when the winter comes, I'm staying in the house. I don't want to go out like that. But understand, he said, you lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. See, he was talking to the church of Laodicea. Laodicea, let me, let me, let me tell you something about Laodicea. My God. It meant the rule of the people. The rule of the people. So what they were saying was they went more on vote and boards by majority than what God said. So if the majority said we going to church this Sunday, we going. But if they said we staying home, we staying home. It's not about the majority. If we walking with God, we are the majority. We are the majority. I don't care what your eyes are telling you, you are the majority. We walk with God. We can't be moved. We can't be shaken. If we walk, walk upright. He says, who can pluck you out of my hands? No one. No one. The problem is we start removing fingers so we can get out of his hand ourselves. See, no one can block you out, but you can jump out on your own. That's right. That's right. See, we, we, we forget about that part. That's right. That's right. We already want to say, yeah, I'm a God. Can't nobody take me out of his hands. Yeah, but the Bible also says, <laughs> we're two, what we say, uh, what I have put together when he's talking marriage, yeah. let no man put asunder. Do you know that we always think about people outside of the two? But do you know that the two he's talking to is included in that? Because, see, we look at, I'm not going to let nobody mess up my marriage. Joker, what you doing? He said, what I put together, let no man, not no man outside of the marriage, let no man put us under. That includes husband and wife. But we too busy trying to look at everybody else. Get away from me, Satan. You ain't about to mess up my house. No, he's he trying to cause you to mess it up. Yes. See, we're the ones that jump out of the Lord's hands. No one else can pluck us out. We tired of jumping yet? I told you I was Navy. We had a term called jump ship. And a lot of us is jump ship out of the church. Jump ship out of relationship with God. Walk the plank.
But he's calling us to stay in the fold. There's too much to do in this world. We see enough lukewarmness out there. We don't have time for it in here. If you're going to be for God, be for God. If not, get out of the way so somebody else can. And we don't understand that the people out there are watching as we continue to mess up. And then they want to judge. There's no need for me to go in there. They can't even get it right. But I want to tell you, if you're in the house of God, if you see something wrong, don't move. Don't move. I used to tell guys in the military all the time, I can't stand such and such. I don't understand. Well, first of all, you're like E3, E4 right now. They're E9. I understand you don't like how they do things. You know how many people get out because they don't like what's going on? But can you imagine what would happen if the people would stay in and then make the changes themselves? See, we jump ship too early. And we don't give God a chance to use us in the situation. We just want to talk about it and spread the rumor. We don't want to stick around and be the change agent ourselves. We are change agents. When we come around, everything around you should change. Do you understand when, when Saul, before he was fall, it said the light shone. And he fell to the ground. We are the light of the world. Amen. When we come around sinners, they should be blinking their eyes. Whoa. I can't even look at them. Yeah. They light too bright. Yeah. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. We walk around sinners, they should be putting on sunglasses. Oh, no. Let your light shine. Yes. Yes. I did a message one time that said, turn down for what? Oh, I know a lot of young people almost start dancing. <laughs> I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> turn down for what? If God has caused us to be the light, why are you turning down? You pray too loud. Be quiet. Don't you turn down. Turn down for what? Your father made you who you are. Don't you go into what they called you. See, people are trying to turn you away from Christ with the popular opinion as they think. But God has called us to do something totally different. Don't you allow your life to be dim because of what other people think of you. If they don't agree with your lifestyle, just tell them I'm praying for you. I'm praying that one day you understand. That one day you, want, you will too be here. And you will look back on this day and say, my God, what a foolish person I was. I now understand what I didn't understand then. That's fine. Let people come back and get that for themselves. You be the light. Don't act like a light. Uh-oh. No, yeah, yeah. Don't act like a light. <laughs> be the light. But see, when we act like a light, we only want to shine at certain times. I know light switches in my house. I don't care what time of day it is. If I hit it, it's coming on. We, it all depends on who we're around. I'm not going to turn it on night. <laughs> Let me wait till I get out of late presence, and then I'll be who God called me to be. Let your light shine all the time. Not sometimes. All the time. We are his workmanship. Create it for his use. I think once we get that, we'll be all right. Amen. See, sometimes we think we we're created for our own use. Right. I want to do this. I want to have this type of church. I want to have this many people. I want to get this and I want to get that. And God is sitting by looking like, can I come in? <laughs> are you going to invite me in this at some point of time? Right. Right. Or are you want me to bless what you're doing? Right. Right. See, see, we don't want to be turned over to a reprobate mind. Where what we think is right, God allow us to think is right. So he's like, oh, you know what? I'm not even going to try to change you no more. Go ahead. You got this thing figured out. Go ahead. Just go and do what you're going to do. But again, you still can get to Chicago going the opposite direction. <laughs> it's just going to take a little bit long. And gas too high these days. <laughs> I don't know about y'all. I ain't got time to be riding around in a circle trying to get to the destination I'm supposed to be in. 
Unless y'all want to let me borrow some gas money, I'll take it. <laughs> change directions, y'all. But do you know one thing you have to do before you change directions? Is you have to apply the brake. See, if your car is going in one direction and you try to change it out of applying the brake, you're about to buy a new transmission. So to change in the direction we're supposed to be going, we got to apply the brakes to what we've been used to doing. Stop what we're doing to go what God has called us to do. Yeah. And see, we got so many torn up transmissions because we're trying to do both of them. Right. I'm going to go back for five minutes and I'm going to go forward for five. <laughs> transmissions are expensive. But guess what? Your life is more expensive. Yeah. Your soul is more expensive. Yeah. Yeah. It's time out for going back and forth. That's right. Back and forth. That's right. I'm not going to do it, Pastor Brad. I know you're waiting on me. <laughs> but before we go y'all I just want to give you a couple things to help us move forward we're going to get out of here and a couple things they're principles faith and love pastor talked about them today in the ordination faith and love we need those we got to have faith the Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God it's impossible to please God and see, when we apply faith to our lives, it will, it, it, will, it will take us further than what we think we can go. Because, see, then other things we can believe. See, we, we can't believe everything at once. At least we think we can't believe everything at once. But when we apply faith to it and we see things happening little bit by little bit, our faith starts to grow. And we start to believe more and more of what God is saying to us. If he did at that time, I know he'll do it now. See, in the beginning, it's hard to have that faith. Because we're still in, that, in, 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 the, in the natural eye stage. We haven't quite crossed over into the spiritual eye state yet. But as we start seeing things happening in our lives, not that it should require that, but I understand where you are at times. When you start seeing something, you start believing it the more. That's okay. Keep doing it. See, we like to see one thing and then we walk away from it. Because we know if he did it this time, like I said, he'll do it again. So we think because he did it now, that gives me a chance to go back and dab into this foolishness I was doing. And when I come back, he's going to be there. That's not what he called us for. We're still trying to walk in our own way. The Bible says walk in the way. Paul was, uh, Saul was killing Christians of the way. The way was of Christ. That's what they called Christians back then, walking in the way. We see, we get in the way. Of walking in the way. Because we're trying to do it ourselves, y'all. We're trying to do it ourselves. But do you have faith? Do you have faith? Yes, you do. The Bible says he's dealt every man a measure. He's dealt every man a measure of faith. How are we going to use it is the question. Or are we going to use it is the question. Are we just going to stand back nearly willy and allow things to happen to us? Or are we going to put that press on and believe by faith and know it's going to happen. And I think a lot of us sometimes, and I know for speaking for myself, I got mixed up, y'all. But see, like I said back then before I was promoted, I, I was so good at what I did, I thought it was supposed to come anyway. See, I had the entitlement spirit. And see, once I got entitled, I expected it to happen when, it was, when I thought it was supposed to happen. But when entitlement leads us down that road, we get disappointed. And when we get disappointed, we start losing hope. And we start losing faith. And we start walking away. Just change the entitlement. We're not entitled. We're not entitled. None of us in here are entitled. My wife had this thing. She said, I don't even understand the term entitled Christians. It's an oxymoron. How are you Christian and entitled? But I told her. Christian is the last name. It depends on what you put in front. Whether you're going to be moral or whether you're going to be carnal. See, Christian is the last name. What's the adjective in front of it? We have to choose what we want to go in front of it. It's already given to us. But we have to allow it to move us and not move in our own direction. Love. 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. 
Love covers a multitude of sins. I told you he hates the sin, but he loves the people. Where's our love? Where's our love? Are we showing the godly love that we're supposed to? That love that Christ has bestowed upon us, are we showing it to others? Because, see, what we forget is we, too, at one time, wasn't deserving. But he said he loved us while we were yet still sinners. Why is it while people are sinning, we can't love them? How quick do we forget where we come from? We forget. Love, y'all. Love. We're almost out of here. I just want to tell you, make a decision to become who God has called you to become. It doesn't matter what the other people say about you. What matters is, is can you see yourself the way God sees you? Keep pressing. Don't stop. We haven't arrived yet. Don't let anything get in the way. Okay? I love y'all. And I'm going to sit down. And I'm going to turn this mic over to Pastor Proto. I pray that something said today will encourage you to continue to press and to continue to move forward. God bless you. As we tithe and give offerings, we are believing God for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and good surprises, finding money, bills paid off, bills decreased, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give to the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. Amen.